<laughs> All right. Welcome to the Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny. That's at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. <laughs> Listen, I haven't been around for a couple of weeks. I know. It was yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, it was weird. So I'm glad to be back. I want to talk about we have a wanger banger week going on. Talk about all sides of it. You know, uh, the momentum, the things that are happening, the things that haven't happened yet. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, I think everybody can feel it. And it was all somewhat by design, somewhat not by design. But I think that's part of, like, the cool thing to talk about is that, you know, I knew we had the powerlifting and bodybuilding. Well, we'll bodybuilding and powerlifting set up where four of us are doing both. 20 of us are basically doing the powerlifting meet. That's set in stone, right? We're doing the documentary, raises the fucking bar. We pop the book at the front of the week, raises the fucking bar, keeps me busy, fucking locked in. And then you're going to get some Nerf hoop lobs along the way. (laughs) That's just what happens. And that's what you hope happens, right? Jake Owen shoots through, fucking awesome today. Mm -hmm. Gives a bunch of exposure to the book, shows love to just the whole situation here. Pulls the fucking tour bus up at fucking 4.30 in the morning. Super wet. (laughs) Super fucking wet. (laughs) You know, it's like, there's just, uh, I had a big business call earlier in the week that we can't talk about yet, but it was huge. There's, uh, yeah, doing the fucking news, doing the fucking radio station. Like, this will be a week. Book tour. Once, yeah, once we cap off the end of this week, once the documentary comes out, I'm going to be real happy that we got we grabbed all this info because this is, like, on some legendary shit. At least yeah. that's the plan. It's kind of cool because there were so many irons in the fire, and now some of them are coming to fruition now, yeah. you know? right. So, yeah, so I guess maybe everybody can weigh in on kind of they're just – you know, kind of spot this week, things they're seeing, things they feel, because Trey's capturing a lot of it, right? You're editing a lot of it. Cole's making a lot of it and taking part with lifting, too. So it's like, he's my fucking rap guy. Yeah. He's also going to fucking bench yeah. and deadlift. Dog. Dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? I'm, I'm, yeah, this weekend I'm, I would consider myself a role player. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not the star. I'm a role player, you know? You, you, utility, man. I got yeah. a job, and I'm going to get it done. Yeah. But, but you're a... Hey, but that's a big role, Cole. Is. Yeah, it is a role. Especially rapping knees. Especially yeah. rapping knees hey, for hey, world hey, records. Yeah. Cole's a good hype guy, too. Right? Yeah. Fuck hype yeah. guy. He's the belly guy. He's the Cole's belly up guy. Dude, Cole yeah. Cody yell at you. Guy. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of small things, you know, of course. like every, <laughs> Not your every, arms, though. You know, every, Not your arms. Yeah, everyone sees yeah. the slam dunks. Everyone sees all that stuff. But <laughs> everyone they, sees but, the slam dunks. But, you know, they don't take for granted, you know, the one guy who, like, gives them one tip and it changes everything, you know? Yeah. And that this weekend, you know, with the belly up calls, with the back, back, back calls, you know, with the tightness wrap, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of value that can be added, and I'm really excited to, you know, help the team win and do cool shit. Fuck yeah. And what the biggest thing is, like, that I like for you guys to feel, not just watch, be a part of and feel, is how this feels. Mm -hmm. This is how you get things to take off. It's super important. For sure, yeah. And Mm -hmm. when you feel this, and they don't have – so. This is funny because you know Rachel don't give me no love, right? Re- oh, my wife. I'm talking about sure. my wife. She's not. She's not overhyped by Corey G. Shout out, Rachel. Yeah, shout out, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she texts me this morning. She goes, "You're hot this week." Oh. Okay. oh! 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 <laughs> Boing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if she meet me physically, but she said like every day I get up, there's some shit on. You're on, you know, the fucking TV. You got this country guy over. Like basically, she don't ever show love. Yeah. On purpose, but it was pretty funny. So I, and so what I, happened after? So that? I came home and I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, like that text, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh. She's like, yeah, you know. I was like, and I, I, I try to downplay because if I overhype, she's like, this is why I never tell you anything. So anyway, and then but he strategically walks even off Ra- that day. even Rachel's feeling the momentum. That's kind of my point. Yeah, that's so. that's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of a hard thing to communicate to someone what it actually feels like. That's yeah. why I wanted yeah. to bring it up because yeah. yeah. you guys are yeah. feeling it, right? Mm-hmm. So, Trey, what are you seeing from behind the camera? Um, I mean, dude, I'm just excited, like, to like, just capture everything and, I mean, just continue to capture everything. Like, you yep. said, like, we were talking yesterday when we rode down the radio station. Like, you can just feel, like, the momentum. Like, mm-hmm. you can feel it in every single, like, facet. And that's the cool thing about momentum, too, in the first place is, like, it, uh, it like, runs over, though, and it's, like, everything. Mm-hmm. So, like, one thing, you know, like, one thing will catch momentum and you can kind of, like, and you can feel it and then it 
something else, another, it might be like a totally another business venture or yeah. like whatever it is, but it all just like flows together though. And that's kind of the thing. You don't really know what, it, what's going to pop off, Mm-mm. you know, or you, just keep, you just keep trying yeah. shit over and over and yeah. over again. And then someone's finally going to hit. And you hope, and I, I think that this is like in my career when I've done some things that, you know, have a lot of discipline around them. Like what we're trying to do, what we're going to do this weekend, how to have a lot of people partake. There's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of role players. There's a lot of important parts. There's a unison across the gym, Max Effort, Corey G, all of the things that Varsity Creative, everybody right now. So that's why everybody can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's all on the same page, working as a team, uh, it's just there. There's something real interesting, but but I think that's why. And it's difficult. So when it's difficult and you're executing, you're putting yourself out there. Everyone starts to believe even more, and then they see some of this media, right? So it's yeah. like they they know I'm fucking believing it. So it makes everyone else believe it more. And it's, so it's like I just think then it starts to open up for just some really really interesting things, man. So with the uh, one thing I want to talk about is the book. Right. So, I mean, obviously we kind of opened up on max effort a little bit, kind of yeah. as a free gift with purchase or, yeah. or a gift with purchased. And, uh, but now it's on Amazon, like yeah. the big daddy of them all. Right. So what, it, I mean, how does it feel now compared to like the mindset manual, for example, or does it, or does it feel the same? Mm, like the, the release? Yeah. Of it? So what's, what's really cool about the books is it locks you in that period of time too, kind of like these podcasts do. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why I like doing as much content as possible when we have weeks like this, which don't come all the time. But I can always go back and go, hmm, that's on my sweat. Where's that guy at? What do I need to do to create that again? How, how do I feel like that? And the book's the same way. Like It locks you in that period of time of how you thought, what you've been through. So Mindset Manual was real locked up to right at to the end MP, really. I've grown a lot as a person since then. Like more of so a snapshot. Th- yeah, right? so then I got to grab all of those pieces and add these other pieces, right? And maybe tell the story a little different. I had you guys involved on the audio thing, which we could go deeper because of our relationship too, which made it even better. And so, yeah, it feels, I'm real proud of it. I'm mm-hmm. real proud of it because what I noticed, and I never even thought about that, there's people from my high school I haven't even talked to in 15, 20 years that are commenting on my Facebook, I got mine. We give it yeah. to my kid. I'm mm-hmm. like, I, what I kind of, me and Dustin talked about this yesterday. Everybody can partake in it. They might not be in the fitness or supplements. They might not have been able to able support me before, but mm-hmm. now they can yeah. because this is a general, yeah, we're still, you know, there's a lot of workout talk, but it's a general concept that anybody can identify with. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I've had a product like that. The mindset manual was still pretty subculture to just my, my people that really support and know me. This, I think, really has a chance to go wider. Yeah. So that's what's net. really, yeah, that's what's really interesting for me. You don't even have to work out to get a benefit <clears throat> from this. Yeah, and I think they're starting to see that. I mean, we saw it like on when you went on Good Morning Columbus. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's it's such it's applicable eh, applicable to everything and mm-hmm. everywhere. So yeah. So I think, and once again, you guys are all gonna have your. Pe- pieces of like you will do things like this Mm -hmm. in this i think you guys as young business people seeing me go through it as the old the og it's like when it's your turn to do these type of things Mm -hmm. we've already kind of went through it right and so it's like well doesn't seem that scary g fucking wrote two books he's illiterate (laughs) (laughs) well it's kind of they thought that that was like one of the cool like cameron fontana brought that up i said that to him off camera he brought it up pretty close, like, hey, this was, like, a big deal for you. I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm not good at this stuff. Yeah. And I don't even re- – so I'm comfortable saying those things. Most people are not. And so I don't really think like that. But DK's dad, uh, Kevin, brought it up at the game. He goes, hey, man, I saw the thing on Facebook. And that's the other thing is there's some other general people starting to see this stuff. And, you know, that don't really – they're not heavy in the workout stuff. He goes, the fact that you just said that you were that bad at it is really, like – honest i'm like well it's just the truth he's like i'm really bad at writing too he's like i got a fucking master's degree <laughs> he's like, yeah. he looks at his wife he's like april to write all my shit so it was like funny because he identified with that because it's just truthful mm-hmm. and he said the authentic thing about my my sweatshirt he's like yeah we see you around and that stuff all the time like it would be weird if you had a collar on yeah so these little things that i think and take for granted because i've doubled down and they're they're me 
they're I think people are grabbing some of those pieces. So that's where the value is, which I get excited about that because I think that can go for anybody. Yeah, and then it's a collection. It's literally a collection of your life's work. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then you're giving like real life experiences that like I mean you can't really make those up. You know what <laughs> I mean. Especially that first chapter is an absolute banger. Yeah, thank you. And then when we throw like the different questions and input like. Just, just wait, wait so for the good, audiobook. Bro. Like you definitely got to listen to the audiobook because there's a lot of like extras. Yeah, no, I mean, look, my mom's my biggest fan, but she said you guys killed it. Well, why don't you tell, <laughs> talk, talk about that? I mean, you were yeah. sending your mom the chapters oh. as we were recording it, right? Yeah, so my, my mom went through chapter after chapter because once again, and you guys will experience this when you guys tell your story like this one day. Like, I liked, I wanted to make sure she she understood and was cool with everything that was going out because it's hard to hear. A struggle. It's hard to hear the way I feel um, or felt as a young kid in that perception. And I don't want her to be surprised by anything. And I want her to take like, hey, we made it. Like this shit worked. So like, yeah, it fucking sucked. But like, you know that. And so, yeah, she just said the audio experience is literally completely different. Mm -hmm. And she said, like, because you guys know me as well as you do now and because we've been working together as long as we have. It, it enhanced the experience, and I think it gives this podcast a real shot to be really big. Mm-hmm. If the book can run, it can shed light on how good this show really is to a wider demo. So I wanted that for what each piece that you guys played in this book, and as we collectively do this, I, I'm hoping that for us, because that's how it should be, in my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to have a successful bestseller and get... But, like, it can grow the whole team because everyone had to put their piece in, mm-hmm. literally, or it doesn't happen. So I, I, I know that, you know what I mean? And that's important to me, too. So it's pretty cool. Okay. That's why I've been shouting you out on the fucking yeah, shout news out. and a shout-out, Cole. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this has been the most amazing week of shout-outs. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, hold on. I even had my own introduction when I walked into the gym today. I, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Am I in a dream right now? Like, there's like 10 people but yelling yeah, at me. That's authentic to your personality, though. That's yeah. why it's working so right, yeah. well, right, Cole? Yes, it was uh, It was very funny seeing Danny walking today. First off, it's very seldom that we get the, the presence of small arms. So it, it is a very important day. Um, Jake Owen asked for him. Ask He's like, where's arms? the, he goes, he goes, where's the guy with the small arms? <laughs> 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 I go, he's right over there. And he goes, oh, okay. okay. I get it now. Cause obviously your arms are big. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he did not just say He's that, like, yeah. where's the guy with the yeah. noodle arms at? Yeah. <laughs> But it was, it, yeah. Well, I, I was talking with Peters. It was like me, Peters, and like, yeah. Sea lover. Sea lover. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. We were talking about how, you know, usually if you roll up, because you rolled up at like, what, what 415, 420? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And usually if you roll up at 420, you, you either get the, oh, there he is. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, Dan- and Danny gets like a standing ovation. Yeah. <laughs> like, Pretty awesome. Yeah. Didn't know how to react. I just kind of just kept, kept walking, yeah, kept moving forward. And yeah. then he look, he comes over in the mid set. He's like, I can't believe I didn't wear my signature T-shirt today. I know. J- Jake he wore Emery, a fucking pineapple wore shirt. Pineapple. <laughs> yeah. J- Jake, Jake Emery rips off his shirt. He's wearing not small. I'm like, yep. wow, thanks for doing me a solid here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to pick it up. <laughs> so fucking funny. Yeah, that was, it was so good. But, like, I was talking to, t- to Tyler earlier. We were watching the, the glog <laughs> from today. Yeah. And I'm like, you know I haven't the, seen it yet. I can't I wait. Like, you know the best thing about just the Small Arms Danny account is just because I can literally do whatever the fuck I want on there. Yeah. And just totally well, no, no, fuck no. off. So this is the part, the point, Danny. You can do it fuck you want anyway yeah but this allowed you to feel that yeah that's why i think having a character a little yes. bit helps you be yourself i just happen to be my own character i think yeah. that's <laughs> and, and does that make sense <laughs> which, which, it does it does make sense which, now, yes yeah <laughs> which go back to a year ago this is why i was so pressing on when is small arms danny yes like, when are you going to change your username because i know the impact of the mr energy character yes. to donnie traps to now cold dog it's lit it's, and just it's the an over and the graphic gangster just hanging yes. out there. They, you the know? graphic gangster, yes. yes. Like, like if you know, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's a the umbrella. Yes. Name. Yes. <laughs> now, like, I'm full go anytime, any place. Like small arms is. Please it, go back and look at our most re- recent collaboration. You you won't regret it. Yeah, the, the collab <laughs> from yeah. our yesterday. Our, yeah, yeah. F- whenever we went on our trip to the Death Star, in yeah. the galaxy yeah, far, exactly. away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the galaxy far away. Yeah. Far away. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yes, shout out. We made that in like 10 minutes, yeah. too. Yeah, so good. Lucas Mom. That was the yeah. one where you guys... <laughs> well, because we were actually, we were actually uh, uh, 
FedEx came and they picked up the supplements. And me and Danny were, we're just, just talking. Fucking off. And we were just talking about. I, I asked him if he's going to go home and watch Star Wars because it was May the Fourth. Like, yeah, May yeah, the Fourth yeah. be with you. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. Of so I walked by. I'm like, dude, I think like. We should just take it like a mirror pick. Take a mirror pick. <laughs> of flexing. Did you see it yet? Yeah, yeah I saw it. Oh, okay. The one that has like the. Li- I, I didn't know what I was looking at, but I saw it. Because I wasn't here, so I, yeah. I saw it on yeah. Instagram. I'm like, I'm thinking, did they make this? Like, what's it? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Cole, can you put the you know the background of like the Death Star, or, like the hallway so or good. something? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. It should be Storm, fun. Storm it's great. And you guys just came up with that walk in from the office to the, yeah. the door. It's, like, uh, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. For, I'm going to go back to, uh, like, this whole experience. Oh, like, yeah, turn, we got, turn like, it back. Big Mo on our side right now. Yeah. If you think about it, it all started on Jan 1 with the I1 Abs contest. Agreed. That's what it started with was <clears throat> over-delivering with the fucking Benz, yep. with the Rolex, everything on that. Then, while we were working on the I1 Abs contest is when we said, we need the fucking book. So mm-hmm. then we busted ass and executed making the book. And along that process, think about how many other small things we take for granted, like, happened. For sure. The Arms Army account was created. Yeah, big man. Shout out. Gave yeah. birth. First gave, gave, birth. gave birth. Gave birth. Yeah. Like yeah. everything was rolling. I think people were seeing that. And now it's fun to see all the execution now start to really pay off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of lines in the water that are now starting to shed, li- that are yes. starting to come to fruition, which feel good. And honestly, part of that was me getting healthy on that process enough to even to try this. Like, you know, you can be in decent, like me and Trey talked about this, like, I had been this tight, but I, once again, didn't have all my muscle back yet, or I didn't feel strong enough to do the lifting part. Like I've pieced together because I can lead to have people get results, but like to really be myself, this is the first chance I've had at it in a little while. So my gratitude is like crazy high, 195 days of lunging. I've squatted now five days a week for eight or nine weeks. You know, it's like, the group is like the cohesion is really strong right now and the belief and then like that's why i just believe what's going to happen this weekend is going to be out of control legendary it is i believe it because everybody's prepared mm-hmm. I, you know this is the first time i'm going into an event i'm just going to weigh what i need to weigh i'm pretty sure just because i gave myself enough time um i'm excited for guys like cam i'm excited for yeah. zach Matheny. I'm excited for Tyler Galbraith. I'm excited for the guys that, you know, are going to do it. And then the guys that just are doing powerlifting, getting Treadway back on the platform. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, that's huge. Dawn. Fucking Dawn. Dawn. Dawn's yeah. going to sneak yeah. me. <laughs> Dawn's going to take some records, which are going to be epic. Um, Callahan's going to be the first 700-pound squatter raw. Callahan's going to squat something yeah. stupid. I think all the guys doing both events are going to be sneaky. Like, I think they're going to hit PRs, which will be epic. I think there's going to be a lot of chalk being moved that needs to be moved. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of factors and I do believe that we're going to get the interviews that we need, the heavy hitters and that <clears throat> I'm sure Jake has good contacts. Obviously Arnold's got plenty of contacts. It's like when we, when we wrap this thing and edit it properly, that it has a real chance to shed light worldwide on what's happening. That's why I'm, <clears throat> I'm excited about the opportunity. I was going to say like what for anybody who has no idea like had no basis before this mm. episode. What you, what you, what do you want out of this this documentary? Like mm. what what was your overarching goal or Yeah, so here? I want to showcase the cons- what the consistency <clears throat> can do in that I it, me and Brian were just talking about this today that a lot of people think you have to be in one lane or the other. And I've never really been in one lane or the other. I've always been in both. In the showcase that it's possible in to create essentially uh, my own lane, our own lane, you know what I mean? And showcase the skills of the guys that are here, what we really can, what we can really do, what we're really about. Um, so just to really shed light on how great, not me thinking it's great, but how great I really believe it is that um, I want to, you know, show press about what we've created, but it's like, it's about like the team and just like, there's so many pieces. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, look at Cam's in fucking high school. That's fucking killer, guys. <clears throat> Tyler insane. going and digging holes the rest of the fucking day and trying to pull this off. Matheny's schedule is crazy right now. The amount of business that we're doing and, and got all, like, Everyone has their own little chopped up version of, you know, they're there and here yeah. and that they're dealing with and, and battling against and like, I don't know. Like I Greek just, gods right now. Yeah, there, there's, it's our golden era and we're capturing it. 
if I look at, I w- I'm the only person that I know that's seen every take of Pumping Iron. I was around when they were shooting the West Side vs. the World. I know, like, I really believe we're having a mixture of those two things in our own way. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot. That's a lot to say, but that's what we're t- attempting to create. Mm-hmm. And so, if we're just capturing what we're doing, I'm never going to look back on this and go, oh, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens this weekend. I, I know that when I step on stage or when I get under that bar, I gave everything I had all fucking week, all prep, every fucking squat session, literally, because 10 weeks ago I wasn't squatting at all hardly. So, like, it's everything. Everything that G got, <clears throat> you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what it is. I mean, that's probably one of the most remarkable things since you freaking <laughs> ruptured your super spinatus, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, look how long that road has been to right now. It's been like three years. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah most time. people aren't. <laughs> like, no one's going to do that pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, today, like, even just the stuff I'm doing a couple weeks out <clears> of the show, mm-hmm. triple on that fucking military press. I hit five chains on the fucking close grip off floor press. Like, I feel good. And, uh, and I'm excited about, once again, I believe if you can work through that adversity – and you give yourself a chance that that's when some crazy shit can happen. Because mm-hmm. once again, you prepared to the point, I have an expectation of what I think I can do, but you don't really know till that moment, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's, um, I've been mean, popping out of bed quick, man, excited. Mm-hmm. I'm also excited, though, because it's been stressful on my family, too, because I'm, I'm checked out a little bit right now. I mean, that's just the reality. I'm, I'm like going to my Super Bowl for the year. That's the way I feel like. Yeah. And they know that. You know, Ray's been doing a good job of dealing with that. And then, but she's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get you back next week." I'm yeah, like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. excited to be back." She's you ready know? to drink some pints with you. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try not to blow up all summer. <laughs> <laughs> Poolside pumps. Yeah, exactly. So Dark it's side. it's exciting, but <clears throat> I really like. I'm excited because watching as you guys have matured and will continue to when it's way past what I'm doing with you guys. I know that this week right here will be something you you guys none of you guys will forget because you're a part of it you're helping execute it we're, we're doing big shit and this is something i'll be really proud of career wise mm-hmm. you know so that's yeah for all of us for everybody yeah. dude all mm-hmm. involved i told i think i was telling trey or cole i think it was trey that when arnold and them guys did pumping iron they were a subculture group of people that not a lot of people knew about in that um Charles, I forget the two guys' name that did it, but I look at like these two guys, like varsity creative, mm-hmm. kind of like that, right? <clears throat> that once that project was done, they never were look. Once it got the light shed on it, they were never looked upon the same way again. It became like a whole diff. So for the rest of their careers, they were part of that. It was a cult thing, and I believe we have a chance at something similar. If we do, everyone does their job and we do, including me, I need to go do what I need to do this weekend, right? And so it's like, that's the kind of way I think of things because even though I wasn't there for that, that's what I've studied and I was a part of it like way later, right? Mm-hmm. So I know what those guys, I saw the kind of the ways that they were able to benefit their careers from it too. Mm-hmm. Not only was Arnold's career massive, but all of these dudes rolled with it because they contributed to how fucking awesome that was with their skills so like i don't know i think i think of uh, things a lot differently because i've seen some of those like tippy top type of things you know what i mean so it's a different perspective yeah i mean the fact you got to see all the footage from pumping iron is like legendary (laughs) are you fucking kidding me right now that's why over grabbing stuff right now is important because Uh yeah there's some weird shit in there. Well, I was gonna say it's we- 1970. <laughs> 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 the weirdest one, I'll tell you real quick. The weirdest one was when Lou Ferrigno was in an operating room. I might, I told maybe mentioned yeah, this guys before. Yeah. In the in the, there, he's there and they're operating on a horse. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, what line? What like storyline were you going for here? I just don't think they knew what the fuck was going on. There wasn't a storyline. There wasn't a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, it's good. Let's just grab this footage today. That's like me going to the fucking vet hospital and be like, hey, we're going to fucking, you know, operate on this possum today. You want to come in? You want to come in? (laughs) I'm thinking, okay, how's that fit in the story? That's what it looked like. Yeah. Some funny shit. That's hilarious. Yeah, it was funny. (laughs) So, but I don't know. It's, uh, I'm super optimistic what happens past this Uh and, um, what people are seeing right now because they can't deny. I've had actual people say, man, fucking, you can feel it. You can feel it. And there's something going on. So it's like, yeah, that's what I want people to feel. Uh-huh. 
getting hot, baby. Stay hot. That's what they say in baseball. Stay hot, kids. Stay hot. Keep that hit streak alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What do you think, Cole? <clears throat> You're hearing all this craziness. I think it's going to be roller and SEC, like, where everything's at, like, months from now. Mm-hmm. Like, looking towards the future. Just seeing yeah. the true impact of what this Could week do. and everything's done. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Because, yeah, when we do that Cali trip, people know, yeah. like, we've got some heavy hitters that are going to be involved in it, too. It's going to be big. For sure. Yeah. Four minutes. Well, we need a break in four minutes. Yeah. I keep thinking about, like, like I mean, yeah, obviously this week is awesome, but, like, with Max Everett Muscle in general. Mm-hmm. Like, all the stuff we got going on right now with, yeah. like, the, like, some of, the, like, the redesign stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, in three months. What's it going to look about, like? I've, yeah, think about that. We did an entire repackaging of the brand. Yeah. yeah. Too. Well, but yeah. no one's really fully seen well, it yet. That's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, and then winding in more of the stuff from Trey in the morning, which I think is hugely impactful. Getting everything more aligned, you know yeah. what I mean, from the training to the fucking company to uh, just some other stuff that strategy-wise I'm working on. And, once again, I've already seen some of that stuff happen to myself before. So when we're in these new areas of things, I already remember how they happen. So it's, like, exciting to tell you guys about. And then when we feel it and it, and it does happen, like, it's, um, I don't know, it feels, it feels better this time around, though. Because it just feels, you know, not forced, feels even more authentic. <coughs> I was going to um, say, I was going to ask you a little bit about, like, now versus, like, when you were starting MP mm-hmm. back in the day. Like, what's the feeling like? Is it Was it similar? I, I know it obviously changed as, as it progressed on, but, like, was it the, kind of the same excitement level at the beginning? Because yeah, like, I know you talk about, like, when you saw your, you know, when you saw combat on the shelf the first time yeah, that you didn't see yeah. it. Like, that oh, was, there's a lot of those moments that, but I would tell you that because it was a different group of people in a different situation, it felt only parts of it felt all the way organic to me or or authentic, I guess Mm -hmm. not even organic. So it's like there was so much forced marketing that made it big, which it worked. Right. But like every piece of this feels all the way real, which makes me realize that it has potential to be as big as we want to make it Mm -hmm. where that at times, because it wasn't, I wasn't the main driver of like the overall, like kind of vision. Right. And then even with Brad being the main driver, I'm adding it. But even like with our creative dudes, our creative dudes weren't in it like Cole's in it. You know what I mean? Like they weren't living it. They weren't part of it. They were just had a job. Whole you see? Game. Yeah, it's a yeah. whole different yeah. game. Like Trey, what he does in the morning, he does it in a different way because he's part of it. Mm-hmm. He's not just here for a job. He's You're not just here for it. Yeah, it's different. So I felt like that thing did what it did, but it turned corporate real quick. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, we weren't in the same room all the time. We worked remote all the time. It just, it's not the same, not even close. But I had to go through that to get this. Sure. So that that's what, in you know, when I was explaining part about Max Effort the other day, it's got the it factor. And so did MP in its own, in its own way, obviously. But to have two brands like that um, in my lifetime that I know have it, they have it, right? And everyone's had a piece to make it have it, including myself, including Dustin, the whole team, C Lover. Like everyone's contributed to ensure that it does have that factor. So when I know it has that factor, it makes me want to double down even more because I know what's possible because I've already lived what's possible. So to me, it's like I can see, it's like the vet. They talk about the game being slow. That's how it feels. I'm not tripping on it being slow. It's just that I just know execution and it'll 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 be there. So all right, we got to go to a break. It's time for uh, time for uh, what we got to do? Treadway NSF thing or what yeah, we Treadway. Do? Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. Let's go. To, let's <laughs> commercial break. Let's go to commercial break. Do? Commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. Joining us is Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway, to tell us about the NSF Amino Recovery. Treadway, take it away. What's up, guys? It's your boy Tyler Treadway here. I'm here to talk to you about Amino Recovery Lemonade, now NSF certified. What this sticker does is it tells you that everything that we say is in this product is actually in there. They test it against 400 ingredients to make sure that you will not test positive for any performance-enhancing drugs. I know that's a hot topic right now, but we got you covered. Any product that you buy from us, Uh, With this stamp, you can trust it fully. None of our products have any sort of banned substances in them, but we went the extra step on this product to ensure that athletes are safe, they're tested, they know they're good to go. We have some news coming soon as well about some of our other products that will be NSF certified. Awesome. 
Thank, thank you, Mr. Trubway. Back to the show. All right, we're back. That's a great commercial. Yeah, yeah. I it, felt weird because I was blowing smoke in front of the camera as he was talking about being NSF certified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think it's time for the segment of uh, Small Arm Says or yes. Danny Ask a Question. This is the people segment. I think there's the been a lot of great segment. feedback. <laughs> They're saying, wow, man, the questions Danny are asking is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. The leader of the Armed so Army is, is really showing up. He's a great <laughs> podcaster. He's really, you know, people are seeing the growth. They're hearing the growth. So, Danny, take there's, it away. There's a lot of growth. Yes, yes. From the awkward interviews to this yeah, Cor- yeah. correspondence yeah. your wang has grown at least a half inch yes yeah sure maybe a quarter you've been <laughs> telling linda it's three but it's no. not nope she, <laughs> she knows she knows <laughs> Hey, Jeez. well, you got one kid, so you right, just got it the, once in your life. Cut that out, Congrats. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Congrats, Danny. Uh, all right. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, my yep. God. Well, <laughs> when we had uh, Sir Jacob Emery, the CEO mm-hmm. of Lane Pipe, on yes. the other shout the out, other, shout shout out, shout out Jake. Jake. Not <laughs> defi- definitely, definitely not, not small. small. He's not small. Yeah. Yeah, he, he even like wore his not small yes. t-shirt for me today. Like like a true member of the Arms Army would. I know. That's why he was one of our first Unlike the general. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chuck the bicep. Yeah. Um, so, gee, since you weren't here, yes. I, I, I posed the question of um, – what, what was the question about bi- – uh, if you're doing one – Exercise. What are you doing for biceps? Was yeah. that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. So, what is yours? Mr. Reps. Mr. Uh, no, reps. You have a hundred reps. What do you got? What are you Just doing? Just one exercise. Yep. No, oh. you have a hundred reps. What, what exercise are you picking? Okay. Um, you mean for arms? Biceps, uh, obviously. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would probably say, if it's only because I would go rep progression if I could use. 100 reps and split them up because the rep progression is guaranteed yeah. arm splitting pumps. I said yeah. 100 rep rep progression. Yeah, yeah, that's a really like, that's a really good one. We're on the same wavelength. Yeah. Mine was the 28 method. That's yeah, a, that's a good yeah one. the 28 method. Yeah. Sneaky. I would say probably incline curls with the twist mm. because, you know, over 100 reps, if you just gave me some 20s and said get to 100, I'd pump them, twist them, pump them, and then, yeah, they'd be Are pumped. you alternating or are you going both at the same time? Uh, Well, I would go alternate. I would go both at the same time, and I'd go twist them up. Wow. Mix it up. Yeah, mix it All up. All three ways. Yes, yeah, sir. Nice. Said. You know, menage the fucking incline. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah. You know what it means. So, all right, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stay on the arms topic. So, yeah, okay. So, Please, you know, we talk about, you know, speaking gallery. to your biceps. What are some of the things I that yelled you, that to you today. Yeah, yeah, I, I was I was speaking at him. Okay. We got a nice pick. Shout out Trey for capturing that. Great pick. Really capture, <laughs> like, capturing the true auth- authenticity with that pick. Yes. That was a collab picture. It was great. <laughs> that was an amazing picture. I'm going to have to get that one framed, I think. I mean, yeah. Like, you might, yeah. Like we yeah. said, I mean, if you stand in that one particular spot in old school, you automatically the subtract more 5% I, body fat. Yeah, yes. and it's really funny because that one spot where everyone takes their pictures, it's like a ride to an amusement park because everyone wants that spot. <laughs> yeah. So everyone just waits to do their set until they can get the they good They do. Money. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So <laughs> That's hilarious. On arm day, it's the fuck. You just leave the dumbbells in that spot. Yes. Everyone's yes. trying to sneak a look every time they yeah. go by. So, <laughs> so good. <laughs> so what are the, some of the things that you're saying to your biceps while doing curls? Good question. Mm. Well, the godfather, C.T. Fletcher. Mm. Shout out. Shout yeah. out, C.T. Yeah. Know you know, yeah, being friends with C.T. back in the day, he really instilled this in me. Because I would watch, like, I remember we were at old school, and he was, like, kept handling me, handing me dumbbells on the preacher curl with one arm, and he hands me, like, in a fucking 80. And I'm like... Literally, like, cleaning it, but curling it at the same time, and I'm fucking staring at it, and I'm yeah. just like, yeah! yeah. And I, and I literally was like, fucking grow! Like, <laughs> you know, like, and CT's there, and he's yelling at me, and I was like, this is fucking epic. He's literally a one-on-one yeah. hype man. Are you oh, kidding me? Oh, it was unfucked. That's why he's like, come on, cut ass Corey, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fucking love it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think CT just had a big effect. You know, I mean, on my Big talking time. to my biceps. <clears throat> yes, he's on the Mount Rushmore of, oh. of, our, of arm training. The choke your <laughs> yeah. bicep thing he said to me was. You need to make a graphic. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Of the all oh, yeah, the Mount Rushmore, yeah, he yeah. would love that. We, that. Man, <laughs> he would love that. Dude, it would be hell, a hell of a day whenever the Arms Army gets a collab with the goat himself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The California trip, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. is that where he is? He, yeah, he's in California. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. man. He uh, when he came down when we launched the Arnold line. Like, Mike Rashid hadn't blown up yet, and neither had CT. And I was doing buddy curls with Mike Rashid, 
me and CT at the Arnold launch party at Venice Beach. And he's like, so and he's like, yeah, it was fucking ridiculous. When I look back, yeah, I look back, I'm like, what the fuck were we doing? What is happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And Mike was like, you know, really just starting out. So he just like brought, CT just brought him with him. Like, yo, yo, yeah. Yeah. Let me do, let me let Rashid jump in. I'm like, well, hell yeah, dude's fucking yoked okay. up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was so. Yeah, there's things like that I look back on that are just. I, I'm really, gl- I'm really glad that like whenever, because that's whenever I first started training that there was CT to look up to, watching mm-hmm. videos of him, the muscle farm stuff yep. with you, obviously. I'm really like you know, kids these days just they'll never know. Yeah, they'll that's why we got. That that's why we got to pop off, bro. We do. We need I to mean, bring that back. So think about this. Whenever this shit hit net hits Netflix, people are gonna be like, "Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like again." Because yeah. I think the fucking soft ass shit that's happening out here, it's, the fucking yeah. purple ass gyms, and you can't have fucking so, chalk. So subtle. And yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> you can't fucking squat. Like, go fuck yourself. You know, you know what's crazy? Like, when they can see this, they're going to be like, I need a fucking badass garage gym. If I can't find a real gym, and I'm going to be a fucking bout it. Think about how many PSA. kids or, yeah. and people in general don't train with rusty plates anymore. They're all using brand new plates. <clears throat> they're taking it's away the fu- grit. It's fucking stupid. You know? But it's, we're going to bring it back. Joe Gold. And uh, the original dude from World Gym and all those guys and fucking Vince Garanda, like, this is how those bodies were created in the 70s from a place like this, with intensity like this. The power, li- the greatest power lifters from out of West Side, it was created with a fucking environment like this. Like, this is how you do it. Maybe you can do it in a fucking lifestyle, family fucking fitness, but I, f- I mean, I would argue no. You, I mean, no, no one's going to take it fucking serious. I don't know, like... Not to your full potential. No, always. dude, because the environment... People don't even understand what the environment really is like until you... And now, obviously, they can't experience it because they can't just roll in, but that's by design because I want to make sure and protect it. But, like, that environment, that vibe on a fucking big day here, mm-hmm. there's nothing like it. It's the fucking... It's the the real fucking sauce. Um, and so, that's something I'll never get never get used to i fucking love it so like what are one or two things you guys recommend to you know to attempt to recreate their own version of that like if they're at a garage Mm. gym or if they just don't have a gym even remotely close yeah i think you gotta learn how to miss weights most people don't know how to fucking push themselves yeah they're scared to miss a fucking squat they're scared because they're going to drop it at the fucking y drop it at the fucking y (laughs) yeah fuck it you know what i mean learn how to dump a bar Learn how to push yourself. Find a fucking training partner. Find one crazy motherfucker in your area that he might not get up at three in the morning. Maybe he wants to train after after work. But if he's about it, find one motherfucker you can ride with. Like, mm-hmm. I think the train... Arnold the talked about partners. this. Like, when he wrote yeah. his article or post about when Franco died, it's his training partner for 50 fucking years. Like... That's a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they were, they did business together and traveled the world together and trained together. But it's like they had a different level of trust because of that. And like, and they pushed each other to be great. Like that's what your training partner can do for you. That's what we do for each other here. And, you know, that's Kyle Brett was his last day. He'd been here six years. And I did an interview, which I, I think is really fucking good. It's I on the blog. Yeah, I can't wait to put it out. It's – um. I told him, dude, you need to immediately, when you buy your new house, make a fucking sick garage gym. If you have any questions about where you get the deadlift bars, where you get at, tell your fucking brother to get out of bed and train with you or somebody. You can't lose this in your life, dude. I know that your job, your family, they took you away from this place, but you can't lose that, dude. You can still create it because you know what it feels like. It might not feel the same, but it can feel kind of the same. But you're going to be in charge of of that now you know what i mean and i think there's people that that's why they want the hoodie it's going to go up on their squat no matter what gym they're forced to train at they're trying to take that intensity from what they're viewing on the glog and what they're seeing on instagram Mm -hmm. and that once again that's something we're kind of i think giving out to the world because when you understand that you can accomplish a lot more stuff not just in the gym Mm -hmm. so it's cool all right let's shift gears a little bit to uh, the nft world combined for you you two guys so um, I don't know if you necessarily have to get an update on your project, but like, what what are you seeing right now that you are most excited about? Like one or two things, or is there something that you're excited about? Mm. There's some shit show stuff going on right now, ain't there? Well, yeah, I mean, Trey Trey just bought some shit. Right? Oh yeah, Trey, you've been Trey, buying a bunch Trey, of shit. Yeah, Trey was like just talking about this morning. He's in the past like 24 hours. Yeah, I've seen you tweet about him. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> hey, Trey's a good follow on Real Twitter, time. by the way. Yeah. yeah. Give him, give him a so follow. I would say like what I'm most excited about in the NFT world is um. 
I guess like one thing like with NFT world is I'm mo- what the most thing I'm excited about is like seeing how projects and brands incorporate utility mm. and basically like how how projects use like use these NFTs to give back to the people that support them mm-hmm. because a lot of these NFT projects what they are is it's a brand is what it is and they the main marketing thing is the utility so what you can gain out of owning sure. this NFT you know what i mean and so like i'm excited to see how you know how people like how, just how people do that because it's going to be like an its own kind of little niche to every single thing like there's not there's not going to be one utility like how people think in the NFT world across the board mm-hmm. that's the you mean that's the utility that you need for your NFT that's what you that's what your NFT mm-hmm. needs to be successful really what it is is like NFTs they're all ni- they're all their own niche mm-hmm. community <clears throat> that they need to be able to deliver to what those people want what, what yeah. have you seen that you were blown away by the utility. Has there been anything like that? Or something you're like, ah, I fuck with that. Like, that's pretty cool. I might not own that one, but I get it. Is there anything that, like, stands out to, like, get, make, put some, like, you know, I don't mm. know, I guess information around that I guess, that like, statement. the two, two, that, two that, like, stand out to me is, like, I think that, like, I think the <clears throat> NFT projects, like, where they have utility, like, where there's, like, just, like, in real life meetups and, like, stuff like that, like, net- yeah. like networking Fuck kind yeah. of events. I think those are super, super cool, even though those ones are more popular, like, every project has that. Yeah. But I just think, like, being able to, like, just network. It's like an exclusive yeah, to, club. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah, to do like, that. Like, ne- networking is everything. Like, we all, we all know that. And so, like, to have that opportunity then with people that are like-minded – Yep. spending yeah, you know yeah. that crazy amount of well, money on projects too like that's wild and and it's like in itself well, especially nowadays with like social connection everyone's like been like it's returning far back. apart so it now is. they're trying to find that again right yeah. Yeah. yeah it's funny that they're finding that through digital art yes. <laughs> but at the end of the day we need interaction yeah. that's why no, this yeah. thing's so good here at the gym everyone needs it. it's like everyone needs that interaction mm-hmm. they just got to and they want to be part of something for mm-hmm. sure this gives yeah. them the ability to be part of something. Exactly. 100%. Like working remote's cool and everything to an extent, but then yeah, you just mm. you, you, that's a huge missing piece. And huge. that was yeah. like that was something that I went through, and I love work, working remote. Yeah, me too. I mean, I was calling you f- from vacation and shit, mm-hmm. and I was like super. Danny excited. Ferris. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like I, <laughs> but we we still have that like built-in flexibility, which we all greatly value. Yeah. You Same. Know? So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you? I I guess like I'm excited to see how. Again, like how brands use it. I'm interested to see how these new brands, you know, can ad- adapt and evolve because a lot of everything's unproven and it seems like the people want proven things. Like they want the brand to be already at the highest. So it's interesting to see how the new startup brands evolve into bigger brands. And also on the opposite side, how do these big brands somehow get the smaller, more relational utility with their already you know, people already mm-hmm. in their brands like Nike. Like, what are they going to do? How are these other huge brands going to adapt and evolve? So mm-hmm. that's interesting. But I guess, like, what's really exciting to me about the whole NFT space is the people that you can connect with. Yeah. There's a lot of great people. I mean, like, me and Trey are having – we're talking with people in, like, in France. Israel. We're, Israel. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's people, like, you wouldn't even expect. Like, it's it's really, like, mind-blowing. It's really awesome. It's, it's awesome. It's going to be great to uh, eventually have the people that we've connected with all over the world – we can meet them. Like exactly. I, that's what I'm really excited for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wild. And it? yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. Like when I just got, um, that really great before and after I sent out mm-hmm. that guy's from the UK. Oh, 74. Yeah. And it's like, and then as soon as he starts talking on his video, cause he sent me his videos before and after weigh-in videos and he's talking his accent so hard. I'm thinking max effort somehow in, in Corey G fitness app was able to impact this dude's life that far away. And he's like, I got so many of my mates asking about what I did. And I'm like, yeah, man, let's get a bazillion members in the UK. Let's ride. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, it's still, it's still like when I talk to people locally that I still are not really understanding what I do. And I tell them things like that. And even Jake Owen said, like, how do these people get to you? I'm like, man, these people are all from the app. They're following the protocols that we've laid out from the videos and all the pictures and just like they're they're able to get that from the information. Mm-hmm. That is so fucking mm-hmm. wild to me. I mean, you met that dude in Scotland, right? Or whatever. The oh, guy from Scotland? Or yeah, whatever. the guy from Scotland. Yeah. Uh, shout amazing. out Barry Peacock. <laughs> he knows That's, my dude. Yeah. That's my dude. I watched that, a video. I can't amazing. even understand what he's saying. His, his accent's so amazing. Yeah. But he, you know, he followed along, started his own gym. So his was like on not only the physique side, but like on the business part of it. And like when I met him, we had a pint in fucking Scotland. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> 
it, like, it was, it was mind blowing. No, yeah. it was mind blowing. So if once again, if you guys could come back and interview me when I'm starting stuff, to think that stuff is even possible is, yeah, yeah. it's literally mind blowing. <laughs> but it but it never gets old. Yeah, impacting other people or creating communities where they can uh, thrive and get better. There's no better oxygen than that. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. never gonna get better. There's no dollar. There's no thing. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that it's uh, that's why I believe this show needs a real chance, like to do big, big numbers, because I think we can do the same thing with this type of content too. I totally believe. That's why I hope the book selfishly blows up, because then on top of it, we'll get a chance to get some real listens, mm-hmm. and people are like, well, fuck, what else are these guys talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool because I think like with our project, like whenever we we have like the one person who says like this project made me want to start my own business i think that's going to be like a really cool fucking moment yeah for that's sure. gonna happen so, the time. and you'll have the resources to help them do that exactly, exactly. which like yeah because i mean it, honestly it'd be doing a disservice to everyone and even to us and the people that helped us get here is if we didn't share the knowledge that we have you know yeah well and just like you guys working in in the trenches on this and uncovering all this stuff like i think the you know, finding out how things work and how you execute them and creating them. Like you just learn so fucking much, yeah. not only about yourself, about your teammates, about the processes. For sure. And once you know, it, you know it, dude. Yeah. Once you get bricked out, which is, you know, coming it's soon, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. <laughs> you never cannot be bricked out. Yeah. You always true. know. <laughs> it is true. Danny's bricked out right now. Trayvon's forever bricked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you just know. Yeah. Yeah. I saw when I saw him posing in the mirror today, I'm like, it's coming. It is coming. I know. Yeah. I'm Cole talked to himself excited. for like five minutes today straight. It looked like <laughs> in front of the, when you were like talking to yourself when you're doing girl. Yeah. <laughs> you got to. You got to. <laughs> and by the way, you know what I'm talking about. And by the way, it wasn't even arm day. <laughs> no. It wasn't, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> correction, well, <laughs> correct. yeah, yeah. hold on, well, because yeah. me, me and Danny are actually, like, working something, we've been keeping it, but I think everyone following the Arms Army community is going to be very excited, I, we haven't talked to you about this, but we're, we'll be coming to you with something very soon, yes, and I, I think, cannot wait for and that I think presentation, everyone yeah. will benefit from okay. it, <laughs> going to be a great brainstorming session, yeah. let me tell you, yeah. uh, well, that concludes, Small Arm Says, um, all right, okay. happy uh, Flex Friday Eve, yeah. To everybody out there, make sure you hit Flex some curls. Great, um, team bicep. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of a question to ask you. To ask you. Mm. you know what? Well, I guess <laughs> talk about. Um, you said so, so there was someone <laughs> came up to you the other day <laughs> about about, <laughs> about, about uh, asking. Did they ask? Are you small arms, Danny? You had an interaction, didn't you? Did they know you were smaller than Danny? Or they just... Wait, they, I don't you, know if I know. Listen, you guys you getting it, recognized in public is probably one of my favorite things of yeah. all time. <laughs> it's amazing. It is. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. Maybe you're talking about the guy who... May, I don't know if he lives around Grandview or Columbus area or whatever, but he was talking about the Grandview track. Was that what... Was that no, what there was a guy, oh. wasn't it, at Kroger? You were grocery shopping, and he pointed you out. He said, are you small arms? Was Am I interpreting that no, wrong? No, I, I wish that would happen. Though. Oh, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. <laughs> it's going to happen. See, it, yeah. Maybe oh, you're speaking so, into reality. Yeah, so, no, I think you're talking about Whole Foods. That's yes, what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, I was yes. at, yeah, we had a, con- a showing because we are s- selling our place or whatever, yeah. and so we had to not be there. So we just went to Whole Foods and ate dinner or whatever. Yeah. And I, he said he knew you. His name's mm. Travis. He said he's from, like, uh, St. Clairsville. Okay. Um, Valley guy, shout but, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I was wearing my scally and like the, the Gators yeah. script or whatever. Yeah. And he he just said like, oh, you know Corey. I'm like, yeah, actually, you know, I actually work with him. Yeah, <laughs> Man, I'm, that, I'm that fucking small arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So, so fuck. We, yeah. So we got a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout so, out Travis. So we got we yeah. got a clip of whenever you were on the news, which yeah. we've watched. Yeah. Whenever you know post interview, everything yeah. like that. I asked Danny. I was like, Danny, how's it feel to be you know shout out on the news? Blah blah blah. And I said, you know, there's going to be two things that happen. One, one, of course, the given. People are going to go to Amazon. They're going to buy the book. They're going to read the book. They're like, wow, awesome. Yeah. Two, they're going to be questioning themselves, who the fuck is Small Arms Danny? Yeah. It's going to become a Columbus thing. Then it's going to branch out to Ohio. Yeah. Then the world is going to be asking, who is Small Arms Danny? We might have to make, like, a short story, like the legend of Small Arms. Oh, yeah. The oh, book yeah. of Small Arms. The book of Small Arms. <laughs> well, it could be a story of I mean, how you to, how you gain confidence, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. It literally all stems back to that, which is hilarious because, like, I know it is. You've yeah. literally rubbed off on each one of us, like <laughs> yeah. the, your own version of our own version of confidence. It's, that's yeah, literally I forced you guys yeah. to do it. 
Yeah. Yeah, no shit. I think the start was when, <laughs> I, when I hit. Literally forced Danny, <laughs> here's the yeah. fucking microphone. Yeah. Hey, that's here's the microphone in. that's not plugged like in. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Actually, maybe the the fantasy football thing was. I, I was thinking about that the other day, dude. That was so funny when Joe was doing. Oh, the when fucking Joe was like the oh, fucking yeah. the green screen. That was like the funniest shit in the world. Well, even like forcing Joe to do that, that was like yeah. way out of his comfort zone. But he had a blast. His kids fucking loved it. He walked in with a full suit. Oh yeah. I mean, oh yeah. We couldn't have asked a better person to do it. It was fucking <laughs> amazing. Joe. Holy shit. Oh, so check this out. Don Don came to me today and said that. Um, he, he grabbed a box of books and took them to Columbus State to some of the heads and was, like, telling them that they need to use the book as part of the curriculum for two classes. Get his textbook. Don. Yeah. Dude, that's because, a, well, what he's trying to show, too, is that, you know, Nick Sands is, is one of our employees, right? Mm-hmm. He came just from the program, like, most recently. Mm-hmm. I'm an alum that's out here trying to do something. And so he's like, yo, we should be doing things like this. This is like, Corey's like one of us. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that for, from a community college standpoint. So I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Just awesome. And people, yeah. and people like that age, they need, they need to like read something like that too. Exactly, yeah. Trey. Yeah. Right? And to know I'm from there. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? And barely fucking survived it. Fuck. <laughs> 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 we should have Don on just to tell stories we, we yeah, about yeah. me when so. I was 20 years old. Yeah, There's like the one so he told gems. the other day, he was like, <clears throat> "Yeah, I'd go out to, to in between classes, and Corby smoking cigarettes with the fucking head of the program." <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see that, like literally. In the I thought time. there was no nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I was a fucking maniac. I don't think you guys understand. I went from one thousand degrees the other direction to like having my shit together like quick, but I was a mess. Yeah, I thought yeah. there was no problem. I was like, "Well, I'm out of Newports. <laughs> Can I bum one?" I'd be bumming one from the head of the exercise program at Columbus State. That was Don's boss. I was smoking squares with him in between classes. I got no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, every, shout out everybody. You can be a degenerate and get yeah. it together. He's it come just, a long way. Yeah, it just goes to show that anyone can make the change. That's yeah. the truth. That's, that's that the is the truth. That's the point. You don't, you, know, you don't drink tequila the night before you have a big paper. Nope. You don't smoke squares with the fucking head of the program. You know, but if you do, you just got to be able to turn it around yeah. and become a fucking <laughs> and, just, yeah. Yeah. and just know that if that is you and you're listening to this, like I am drinking tequila before I write yeah. Yeah. just know that there's still a possibility there that is. you can become yes. a best-selling author on yeah, Amazon. Exactly. Uh, so yes. Just know. Yes, cool. Just know that that, that's still a possibility. You don't have to. Yeah. That's fucking correct. What yeah. a transition. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. That is a good way to fucking. There's wrap value it up. everywhere. Here. There is. Jeez. Well, fuck. This is the fucking roundtable this podcast. Yeah. The- yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your boy, Corey G, Small Arms, Danny at Trey, Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com. We are out. Is that your Disney wave? This is my, uh, uh, the who's the guy on uh, on ESPN does the wave, the mascot wave? <laughs> oh, uh, Lee Corso. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, got this it. This is the Lee Corso wave. So good. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs>